Hey guys. If you're a Christian and you think that you're secure in your faith, then keep watching this video. If not, you might want to shut it off. Because by the end of this, you're either going to realize that your whole faith was a lie, your whole belief system was a lie, and everything you were taught was a lie. Or you're going to realize the truth. Or you're going to try to keep your belief after this video and wish that you'd never seen this. Because... I'm going to read Matthew 24 and Luke 21. Probably the most popular passages that are ever preached. And you'll never be able to forget this, and you're going to wish that you had not seen this video. Alright? Matthew 24 and Luke 21. Both of them. I'm not going to read them both all the way through, but I'm going to take parts out of Matthew 24. Alright? Now imagine for a second that Jesus Christ isn't a liar that he wasn't lying. Imagine that the disciples weren't liars. Just think, what if these guys were telling the truth, all right? And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be one, here one stone left upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world, or age, which it should have said. Age. That's what the word means there. Alright? So the disciples came unto him privately. Alright? So let's read Luke 21. And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. Alright, let's start where it actually starts. And some spake of the temple, how it is adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, As for these things which ye behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be one left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. Now remember this is a private conversation. This happened in real time. There was not a stenographer sitting there recording these things, saying, we're going to put these in a Bible for future generations. This actually happened. This is a recording of something that physically took place. So Jesus is sitting on the Mount of Olives. His disciples come to him and ask him specific questions. Jesus is talking to no one else, except for his disciples, which came unto him privately. Imagine he's pointing at them. You know, he's poking them in the chest. You, ye, whenever you see these things, right? All right, and he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars, when who? They, the apostles, the disciples. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these things they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. You have no, many, you have no idea how many times I've heard preachers say that this is to us. This, this wasn't to us. We're not the ones that this is going to happen to. We don't even have synagogues, you know. It's, this was to the disciples, all right? And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolk, and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not one hair on your head perish, and your patience possess ye your souls. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed about with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee into the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let them that are in the countries not enter there into. Alright? Now listen, what's the abomination of desolation? You've heard plenty of preachers preach today that there's some kind of, that the abomination of desolation happens now. But he's talking to his disciples 
personally, privately, talking to them, saying, ye, you, your. All right? He's talking to them. Now listen, what's the abomination of desolation? See? That's it right there. Luke said it perfectly. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. This happened in 66 AD. The Romans came and compassed Jerusalem about and uh, barricaded them in on every side, built a wall around them, starved them out, compassed the whole place. Nobody could get out or in. All right. This happened in 66 AD. This actually happened in their lifetime in that generation. And this is the abomination of desolation. For if you read Matthew and Luke, it says the same thing. All right. It says, When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house. So the abomination of desolation, the same in Luke, and when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. So this happened whenever the armies came to Jerusalem, the believers fled. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled, all of them. So you who are still living by the prophets, they were all fulfilled. All things written were fulfilled then. So how are you still going by the prophets and saying that some things in the prophets have not been fulfilled? Whenever this already happened, Jesus was talking to them. And every time you read this for the rest of your life, you're going to realize, oh my God, Jesus was actually talking to them. The Bible was put together later, it was an afterthought, and then people thought it was to them. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. It was Jerusalem, guys. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. In Revelation, he said that the temple, that the city would be trampled underfoot 42 months of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles were fulfilled. So the times of the Gentiles are 42 months. This war lasted from 66 AD until the sign of his coming, the temple being destroyed, and 70 AD was 42 months, 1,260 days. This is how long the war was. All right. And they fell by the edge of the sword. Over a million of them died just on the day that the temple was torn down. And they were led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem was trodden down of the Gentiles. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them, for fear and looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, he's talking to them, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. It's so important to remember, this was written 300, I mean, this was said 300 years before Constantine put a Bible together for everybody and made them all Christians. This was being said in real time to real people. He was talking to the disciples. And he spake to them a parable. See, they were supposed to lift up their heads for their redemption drew nigh. Just like Paul said, they would not all sleep. Not everybody died before Jesus returned. All right? Jesus said in Matthew 16, last two verses, some of them standing there would not taste death until they saw the Son of Man coming in his kingdom and to reward every man according to his works and in the clouds, coming in the clouds. Behold the fig tree and all the trees, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand so likewise ye disciples that are sitting here with me when you see these things come to pass know ye that the kingdom of god is nigh at hand verily i say unto you this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled in matthew he said this generation will not pass away until all these things be fulfilled heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness, and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth, that word is land there, 
They didn't even call the whole earth earth. They didn't even know that there was a whole earth out there. All right, they're talking about the land and Judea, Jerusalem. There was great wrath upon that people. And they, the tribes of the land, saw that the 12 tribes of Israel. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. All right. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. What does he say at the end of Matthew 24? Alright. Servant whom the Lord shall come find doing. The Lord of that servant shall cut him asunder and shall smite him. If I'm charged with mm -hmm. In Matthew 24, he tells them that they shall see all the things that came to pass. He said, they shall see all of them. All right, he talks to them saying, don't let your heart, you, don't forget, be a good servant, watch, so that you can be ready because the Son of Man comes in an hour when you think not, talking to them, all right? The whole thing was a private conversation, talking to them. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. All right. Therefore be ye ready also, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. He's talking to them. This Bible was not written to us. Nothing in this was written to us. He said, whenever ye shall see all these things come to pass, all of them because they were there for all of them and that generation did not pass and that is not written to us that was written to them it wasn't written to them it was said to them it was recorded for the other people that the apostles knew telling them that it would happen in that generation this has nothing to do with us <clears throat> and you've heard that preached all of it you've heard all of it preached the abomination of desolation but he told them when they see it You've heard it preached that there will be wars and rumors of wars before the end. He said that that happened before they even delivered them up to councils and to synagogues and had them put to death. So that already happened. All those things written to them, not to us. Jesus returned in 70 AD. I've got plenty of videos telling you that and showing it. That's what it said. So don't take the Bible as written to you. Take it as a recording of things that actually happened. Whenever he writes to the Corinthians and says, hey, the time is short. You who have wives, be as though you had none. He's not talking to us. He was talking to the Corinthians. That wasn't written for our sakes thousands of years later. He was writing it and sending it to them. They wrote to him asking him questions. And he wrote back answering their specific questions. And he told them that even though they had wives, be as though they had none for the time was short. All those things. James, the coming of the Lord draws nigh. He wrote that to the 12 tribes in Israel in his day and sent it to them. He was talking to them personally whenever he said that the coming of the Lord was nigh and told them to be patient. Paul, whenever talking about the man of sin and Jesus coming with the brightness of his coming and the word of his mouth to destroy the man of sin who sat in the temple of God, he told them that they knew what withheld the man that had to come. They knew he had told them that, so that they knew what withheld until the... Uh, until God was taken out of the way and the Son of Man could come. And then he told them God would preserve their spirits, souls, and bodies unto the coming of the Lord. He was talking to them. The end was then. That was, those were the last days. 